Cool. Welcome to the uh, front end and UX uh, monthly think for the pipeline authoring team. And um, added a few items to the agenda that um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about. So um, just a couple kind of announcements or FYI items first. Um, I've just finished the interviews for the pipeline editor usability test. Um, as part of this research, um, I interviewed five uh, GitLab users and had them create a simple pipeline configuration using the pipeline editor. And next week, I will be analyzing um, the uh, interview recordings and uh, synthesizing the insights. So very excited to share the results with you soon. And there's going to be lots of interesting feedback on how we can improve the linter, specifically the linter output, how to make it easier to navigate, um, and also learned a lot about how our users interact with the merged YAML view and um, how we can improve that as well. So um, yeah, not ready to share any specific uh, <laughs> insights yet, but I think it's going to be interesting. Sounds exciting. Yeah. And um, another research that I'm currently running is solution validation for the pipeline simulation MVC. And uh, for that um, issue, I'm running uh, an unmoderated usability test. Uh, so basically, uh, we're just recruiting DevOps engineers, uh, showing them um, some mock-ups of the designs and asking questions around um, what they expect from this feature, um, how they think it works based on what they see in the screens and so on. And I'm uh, testing two different versions of the designs. One of the versions is where we will have uh, one drop down where you can select between uh, either non pipeline conditions or um, validating your pipeline for a default branch commit. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can have a look at the um, issue there. Is it the solution validation? No, it's, yeah, it's the design issue that I linked. So you can have a look at the designs uh, in that issue um, to see how it works. Um, and another version would be to separate pipeline conditions into separate uh, drop-down controls where you would, you would be able to uh, set ref par uh, parameters um, for your validation and separate pipeline source. So uh, it's kind of like a filters bar uh, in your validate tab where you can set different parameters on your pipeline simulation and you can simulate your pipeline under those selected conditions. Um, so we just want to see whether the feature is easy to understand uh, mm -hmm. because this is kind of something that we're struggling with because the current implementation is very uh, limited. We only have one specific hardcore coded parameter that you can validate your pipeline with. It's only for the default branch commit. Uh, so the struggle here is how do we present it in the UI so you, you understand kind of what it does and what it is. It would be easier if we already had all of the different options so you can see, oh, so I can select the pipeline source. All These are all of the different pipeline sources that I could try. Like it would make it easier because it would put it into context. Um, but we'll see um, if, if the current um, proposal makes sense to our users. Um, and uh, then I have just a couple of questions. So um, I know that you're working or you're going to work on the trigger job page issue. And I was wondering if you have any other questions or is there anything I can do to help? And um, the illustration I'm still working on. So I also wanted to make sure that I'm not blocking you. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so I was actually supposed to work on it the start of this week, but I was out on Monday, Tuesday. So I'm actually just about to start working on it this today. And um, so the illustration wouldn't really be blocking for me. I can actually just use like some random illustration for now and then just, you know, slap the new illustration in. So it's not really blocking. So whenever it's ready, just let me know. And I think okay. Laura also, um, Laura and I have been talking as well, and she's already helped me with the back end parts that I need. So yeah, it seems for the moment, I think I'm good, um, but I will let you and Laura know if there's anything else I need. <laughs> okay, great, sounds good. 
Um, and another issue was um, this issue around indentation in the pipeline editor. So I was just kind of yeah. going through the different <laughs> issues that we have for this milestone. And I noticed that I can't reproduce that problem anymore, but also the autocomplete just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I just saw that um, earlier today as well. So I don't think that it, it's not just the, the dropdown um, that, was gone or the autocomplete, but I feel like the the schema isn't being used at all. I'm not sure what happened either. It feels like a bug. Um, but I also don't remember anything that has been worked on for the schema or the integration with the schema in pipeline authoring. So I'm I haven't checked on it yet, but it's either there's something that happened with the editor because we're using um I think under the hood this uses um the same components as the editor light. Mm -hmm. So maybe something happened there. Um, I'm not sure, but I think the scheme is just not being used at all. And yeah, it's something to investigate. OK, uh, I will double check with the editor team to see if it's something mm -hmm. that maybe happened on their side. Yeah, I'll take a look as well. Because um, it's not just the autocomplete. It's like everything. There's not like if there's an error that I'm expecting, it doesn't show up. And the usually, if you highlight on the keywords, um, you would see an annotation with the definition of those keywords and like what's the expected parameters or things like that. But those aren't showing up either. So it's like the schema is just not being used at all. I think, um, yeah. Okay. Might be a okay. bug. Yeah, I'll create an issue for this um, mm -hmm. and ping uh, you and Dove and the editor team as well to see okay. what they think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds good. I know that they've been working on some changes. I mean, they're always working on something. So it's possible <laughs> that, that it happened. There was actually an MR that I was reviewing where they um, changed some styling on the autocomplete. Mm. So it could it could be related. Though I, I think it only changed um, the styling like when you're hovering over the keywords in the mm -hmm. autocomplete drop down they changed mm -hmm. the colors uh, so it's more contrasty and easy to see uh, but yeah it was very recent and this kind of happened right away after that so um, I'll check in with them to see if it could be the reason yeah I think the other change that um, I'm not sure if the if that MR has been merged yet but one of the things that um, we've been trying to do is to automate the process of, hey, if something changes in the, like the rules logic, for example, then um, the bot in the MR will tell the author to, hey, to, to, to just kind of remind them that, hey, since you've changed these, you might need to change the schema file as well. So just kind of like to update the, um, what's being used in the front end. So I'm not sure if that's one's been merged yet. So I'll check after this meeting. I don't think it should affect um, this bug, though, but uh, that's the only thing that I can think of that's been recently done that's related to the schema. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Right. Um, yeah, so it, uh, is there anything that you're working on that um, you would need my input on or just generally, like, I'm curious what you're up to? Right. Okay. So I've had here, well, you mentioned it in the weekly meeting earlier as well, um, but since I updated the styling and accessibility of the pipeline mini graph, um, and also for Fred's knowledge as well. Hi, Fred. Um, there, I noticed that there was an interesting thing about accessibility where Mac OS doesn't um, enable it completely for some reason. So there are some steps to do in order to enable it on Mac OS and like make sure that testing is going well. So I updated the development guidelines for that and I didn't put it here, but there was also something for the front end where um, I was updating the documentation for how to implement e-tag caching on the front end. So that's basically um, how we poll for updates on the back end and make sure it's um, a, like a, a lot better. <laughs> but I think that one's still in flight. So I'm still waiting for um, a review on that. Um, like I said earlier today and for the rest of the week for this iteration, I'll be focusing on adding the trigger job page. So it took me a while 
to be honest, to kind of understand like the whole context around the issue. Um, I think we've talked about this in the retrospective for the iteration as well. Um, and I've had some conversations with you and Laura about it. So I think, but I think now I'm ready to work on it. Um, since I'm only getting started, I don't have many questions yet, or more like I've already asked them before on Slack, um, but I will let you and Laura know if there's anything else I need. So yeah, I think for now, it's just the illustration. Um, yeah, but it's not blocking, so it's okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm trying to get it reviewed by someone from the UX Foundations team who is uh, usually reviewing all of our visual stuff like that, like illustrations and icons. And I think he's currently at capacity. So worst case, um, I will just create an SVG for this and we can use it. And if we need to make updates in the future, then it can be a follow up like it's obviously not critical. We could even use one of the existing illustrations, but yeah. um, I thought it would be nice to have something that actually represents a trigger job because we don't have that right now. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I also wanted to talk more about uh, all of this confusion around uh, this issue. I think it was like a really good example. It's not the first time it's happening. We, we've had similar problems with some other um, issues as well, or especially when it comes to a new feature design, um, where first, first problem that I see happening is that we're prematurely moving something into planning breakdown, where there are still some questions that were unaddressed or Obviously, we think that there are no open questions, but then they start coming up during planning breakdown. But rather than stopping the planning breakdown process, we kind of try to quickly get the questions answered. And at the same time, we're creating new issues. And now we end up in a situation where we have discussions spread over a design issue and then implementation issues, and then maybe also an epic. So it gets very confusing. So. Uh, to address that problem, I, I think uh, it's important that if any questions uh, come up, that we move the issue back into workflow design and we don't create um, implementation issues prematurely because that way we will have those discussions that are around the design contained in the design issue. Um, and, and this way also, because I'm supposed to be leading the design process and leading those discussions and making sure that all of the questions are answered. So um, I will make sure that we move the issue back into workflow design if there are some open questions. So hopefully that can help with um, not getting issues that are not ready into mm -hmm. planning and breakdown. Though there's still the problem with just generally how we break things down into issues and what issues get created and how we work with epics. But that's a whole different story and I don't, I don't have an answer to that yet because there's yeah. so many different ways we could do things. Yeah, I think it's just, just a really very, there is just a lot of discussions that are really hard to um, summarize, I think. And I think the issue has been like a year old at least so there's definitely like a lot of things to filter through and for someone who's jumping in really late into the discussion like me <laughs> it was just a bit difficult to kind of understand um like i do understand like the, the main problem and what we're gonna do i think the one that i would have appreciated to be included is why this particular solution was decided on so for example um we decided on creating a trigger job page instead of the just adding the button right away on the pipeline graph or creating a modal or something like that. So I think um, the skip in that part of the line of thinking was one that I wasn't, I didn't quite understand very well <laughs> um, while, while I was reading the issue. Yeah, so yeah. that's just that's just for me. Um, uh, but what I've noticed, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll try to add more context around the design decisions uh, to the issue description. And speaking of just generally having a more complete picture in the issue description, this is something we can also improve. So 
I've been um, creating issues oftentimes where I just have the problem section and then the proposal section that focuses largely on just the, you know, like high level design proposal. But um, if we look at our feature issue template, there's a bunch of other sections there like permissions and uh, things like that and um, testing like all of that information is important to keep in the issue and it provides more context also uh, about the problem that we're solving, what needs to be done, documentation as well. So um, I will be using the complete issue template that will hopefully help us provide more structure to that information. And also I'll make sure to summarize the discussions in the issue description as well, because yeah, I think I, I understand when the issue <laughs> is so long and there's one year worth of discussions, um, it's very difficult to navigate that. I think part of that is that it's difficult for me to navigate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but, I don't blame you. <laughs> but, I I have, but I have to do that still. I have to do that and to summarize the outcomes. So um, I'll try to stay on top of that. Yeah, I think um, to be fair, we've had a lot of issues where um, this um, the the current the current process that we have already works for us because like um, some of the issues aren't really that big or they're they're pretty straightforward. So I think it's just when we there are just some issues that come up like this one that ends up being really complicated <laughs> or had has a lot of context that um, stumps us. But for the most part, it hasn't been. I mean, there have been some issues, but like there are also some issues where it's it hasn't been a problem either, and we've been doing good with that as well. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and if you have any um, questions that come up around the trigger job uh, issue, feel free to ping me anytime, and yeah. I'll make sure to unblock you. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything else to share. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, I think, well, one of the things that I wanted to bring up was for the next milestone, um, I actually haven't, um, I think I did check it last week, but I don't know if there have been any changes, but because in the next milestone or in the next two iterations, it's going to be, you know, um, I think GitLab's going to be a bit more quiet. So that might be a good time to bring up some of the UX debt or some of the more smaller quick wins that we could do um, instead of go, going through um, like a big feature at the end of the year. Because I feel like, um, well, personally, I, I might be out like two weeks in December, so <laughs> I won't be able to work on much. So some smaller issues might be something we could prioritize for the next milestone, I think. Um, so if you have any other UX debt issues that you want to surface or want us to look at um, next month, so maybe they tend to look at them. Yeah, yeah, definitely sounds good. I will also be away for two weeks during next month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'll keep that in mind when recommending what issues to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure Doc will also be planning the um, what is going to be 14.7? Yeah. Yeah, seven. <laughs> Keep, keeping that in mind, like also the team will be out, so we will be pretty slow, not that much capacity to work on things. And yeah, I will go through all of the different uh, UX issues that we have and pick some smaller ones that would be good to include. Okay, yeah, sounds great. I don't think I have anything else from me either. Um, there was an overlap with both of our agendas too, so yeah, that was great. <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you so much, Maria. And all right. Yeah, Fred, if you have anything that you'd like to add, feel free to add it to the agenda or just being asked in Slack. And I'm going <laughs> to share this recording. All right. All right. Then it's a wrap. Talk soon. Have a good day. Bye bye. bye.